Yanni Giacomoholis is looking for his fourth title, but he had quite the nail-biter in the quarterfinals. I mean, he actually almost lost, and that's something that has the fans up in a tizzy and a controversy about whether Max Murin scored back points against him at the end of the match. Yeah, it was that close of a match. Let me break it down for you, because I wasn't expecting this match to be that close between you and me. I mean, Max Murin's a tough wrestler, and he's maybe makes the stand this year as an All-American for the first time, but I don't know that he was quite on the caliber of Yanni. I mean, Yanni started off this match just dominating. It was takedown after takedown in the first couple of periods. It wasn't really until we got to the third period where Max Mirren had scored a couple of escapes. It was an 8-5, to five, like close within score, but really Yanni was the dominator of the match up to that point. Then we get to the craziness, which was the third period. The score was 8-5, to five, as I said. Murin was able to score a takedown on Yanni with time ticking down with about 30, 35, 40 seconds left on the clock, and then immediately took him to his back. Here is the situation that happened here. He took him right over, and you see him take him over one. Oh, is that back points? Right there. I don't... Ooh, man. How darn close is that? Is that actually back point? So, that's the thing that has fans up in a tizzy. Because the ref wasn't counting any back points. So, should Murin have scored? Should he have at least gotten a couple of back points there? A couple of swipes? Fans seem to be up in the air about it. I mean, you see Corey Matt says, no backs for Murin. I agree with it. Yanni was clearly up off the mat enough. So, so what is the rule here? Well, the rule states that, yeah, it, it seems like, obviously, if you're 45 degrees, like, on your back, the ref should be counting. However, one thing that goes by the wayside that a lot of fans don't realize and don't recognize is that just because you're on your back doesn't necessarily mean you're getting back points. And by that, I mean you have to be at least four inches below, like, within four inches of the mat. And at that point where Yanni was, if we go back here... It did not look like he was actually with... I mean, look at that. He's not within four inches. That's at least a few inches off the mat, more than four inches. He's off. You see his shoulder blades are off the mat. So in an instance, while I will say it looked like he may have had back points, he in reality did not. And, and Twitter was erupting over this. I mean, it would have been insane if Yanni, who's on his quest for a fourth title, lost in the quarters, to Max Murin, who is yet to get onto the stand until maybe this year. The fans were saying, you know, I, I respectfully dis disagree with the score. Max was the clear winner. And I'm sorry, he he wasn't the clear winner. Yanni dominated that match. Yeah, it was an awesome attempt by Murin at the end. His coaches were yelling at him saying, come, you, you got to go. You got to go, man. And he did. Not sure why there were no back points there. Murin was in top position already. What's the rule? Why no back points? Shocked there was no brick. Uh, like, shocked the ref wasn't counting. I understand from a quick glance, but his back, his shoulder blades were up off the mat within four inches. This has happened on multiple occasions throughout multiple matches. It happened a couple years ago in a match when I remember multiple times. I was like, why were there no back points? Well, it's because his shoulder blades were off the mat. Yes, Murin turned him, but you get the point. So, what, like... Why would it have been crazy for Murin to get this? Well, Murin still has yet to All-American, like I said. In between him and Mickey Phillippe, 133, these are two guys who wrestled in the blood round for the fourth time in their careers. And here they are now going for it again as seniors. Can they finally get onto it? And I wonder, too, like, is Yanni going to have a tough semifinals match? And by the way, before I talk about the semifinals, uh, one thing that'd be awesome is if you hit that subscribe button. One thing we're trying to do this weekend is get a thousand new subscribers to this channel before Spencer Lee gets his 100th career win on Saturday night. This morning, 600 new subscribers joined this channel, which is incredible. It's free to join. All you got to do is click subscribe. It takes a second. And I thank you for your support. Uh, over the years, you know, given so much value to the wrestling community. And if you got any of that, like if you enjoy these videos, it, it's a great help for me. So the semifinals, yeah, Yanni's going to have Shane Van Ness. And Van Ness has been on a roll, man, Penn, of Penn State at 149. I mean, the upsets that he's pulled, the close matches he's had. Is this the year where the freshman could beat Yanni? I mean, Yanni's had, a, that match against Mirren was close at the end there. 
maybe he finds something else out there. What other matches am I looking forward to? And by the way, thanks Bashamania for providing this fantastic graphic here. I'm looking forward to seeing if Vidal Ruja of Cornell can beat out Dayton Fix. I think that's going to be a tight one there, but Fix seems to be on a roll. Rob, Peyton Rob, and Levi Haynes. It seems to be the story of this night. Penn State in the semifinals. They've went 45 for 5 since 2011. Will that continue? Will they get over 50? I mean, how, how many guys do they have in the semis? Roman Bravo Young, Bo Bartlett, Shane Van Ness, Levi Haynes, Carter Sirachi, Aaron Brooks, and Greg Kirkfleet. Maybe they break the 50 wins since... 2011 in the semifinals. I'd be shocked if they went every single match they won. But anyway, what other matches am I looking forward to? Ah, I would say Carr versus Monday. I hope it's a more exciting match this time. I hope Monday brings something to the table. Carr's looking like a total beast. I think Mikai Lewis and Mikey Labriola should be a super exciting match. Mikai Lewis, I mean, I predicted earlier that this was going to be the semi, but Labriola was going to upset him. I, I like both of those guys have been wrestling phenomenal tournaments so far. Nebraska has had quite the event. I mean, their wrestlers are wrestling on fire right now, being in the semis. This 197 pounds is interesting with seeing how things shake out. I'm excited at 285. Wyatt Hendrickson, the only non Big Ten guy here, could be, I mean, wrestling against Kirkfleet. Could Kirkfleet finally make the finals? And also, Paris and Cassiope, is Cassiope finally going to find a way to overcome Mason Paris? Let me know what you thought about the entire Yanni Giacomahala situation. Did he have backs? Did he not? But more importantly, which semifinals match are you looking the most forward to tonight? And if you haven't seen already, I put a video together of the top upsets at the NCAA tournament of all time. You can watch that here while you're enjoying wrestling all weekend long.